out of our deck. So this is going to be an interesting dynamic between both of our players, but they're set up. They're ready to go. Prize cards have been laid, and we're kicking off our Swiss round two here at NAIC. Comfey in the active and a buddy buddy poffin. This is the usual story. Uh, well, not well, yeah, Buddy Buddy Poffin. I mean, that's exactly what you want to be seeing for Lost Box. Yeah, Buddy Buddy Poffin <laughs> fetching those extra comfies now. Unfortunately for Cameron, right off the bat, before the game has even started, there's a Flutter main in the active, which shuts down abilities no. from the active. So there will be no flower selected in this turn for Cameron, which is really, really unfortunate. And Carnivore players usually play only a single copy. So starting with it against your worst matchup, what a start for Isaiah, a dream start here for sure. Yeah, that Flutter main is a huge tech card because it has so much utility going into this matchup. And we're truly going to see how debilitating that Flutter main is remaining in the active position, allowing Isaiah to set up the board here and Cameron to not be able to be as turbo as we may have thought, huh, Pablo? <laughs> Yeah, looking at this list, there's three copies of Lost Vacuum and three copies of Pokestop, and that really helps Cameron advance his Lost Zone, find the resources he needs to potentially attack yeah. early with Greninja or whatnot. But with that Fluttermane in the active, that ruins Cameron's plans for pretty much every single turn. And Isaiah is playing 12 different basic Pokemon. The chance of starting with this Fluttermane <laughs> in the active is so, so low. Well, that flutter main is definitely fluttering out on the <laughs> field there for Isaiah. Well, let's talk about this Lost Box. You know, we, we talked about it being a turbo build. It's built in a very specific way to go quick. So if you're not able to go as quick as you want, how does the rest of the deck start to fall apart, especially matched up against Gardevoir? Yeah, the whole deck relies on Mirage Gate, right? And the Pokestops, the Lost Vacuum, they're there to help you get resources and also allow you to find uh, pieces that you might need. Now, we do see a boss sword hit the discard pile off of that Pokestop, but as you mentioned, Boo, there's the plan with those cards is to build your Lost Zone as quickly as you can. However, yeah, Cameron not able to do it on a single card Woo! in the Lost Zone despite triple comfy because of that Midnight Fluttering ability. That is brutal to see, but not if you're Isaiah, that is for sure. Let's see if Isaiah is able to establish a board state here for our initial turn. A buddy, buddy Poffin of his own. He's about to chow down and get some of these basic Pokemon 70 HP or less out onto the field. Now yeah, we are going to see uh, that probably fetch a couple of Ralts. We'll have to see if Isaiah can combine that with an Arvin, searching for the team. Evo. Now, we do see one of the very unique cards for Isaiah, that Luminion. These definitely not a common inclusion for a card of our yeah. deck, but Isaiah really favoring the consistency. Yeah, I mean, Gardevoir, there's so many tricks that you can pull out of your bag now with Gardevoir. Uh, a lot really has been unlocked thanks to that Monkey Dory inclusion. And I'm excited to finally see its debut, really, here in, uh, in NA from Isaiah Bradner. I think uh, the story has definitely couldn't have sh shook out any better here. Couldn't have started out any better, Boo. You're completely right. Now, Isaiah being very thorough with his price checking, pretty much arranging his deck in, <laughs> in deck list order at this point, figuring out exactly what he priced, what he doesn't have access to. And that's so key for every single deck, right? We saw yeah. also Cameron do it. So this is what you expect to see on the first turn for players to be very thorough with their price check because you never want to make a play based on something that you actually don't have available to you especially in these decks that are so resource management heavy. And both of them are. I would argue Lost Box a little bit more because some of your cards are disappearing forever. <laughs> but Isaiah is definitely going to have to be making his way through a lot of card options as well and having to make uh, those choices. But really, it's a, it's a, not a lot easier from Gardevoir because you're just drawing cards, you know? Yeah, those <laughs> refinements just give you so many cards, so many resources, and especially against a deck like Lost Box, right? Yeah. Which plays very little. Um, the hand disruption, disruption, right? There's no mm -hmm. Ionos. There's sometimes one copy of Roxanne that can be utilized later. And uh, there could be unfair stamp. That's not usually what you expect. You expect Prime Catcher most of the time. Now, Isaiah is starting with double Ralts in hand to go with that body, body puffin. Truly a dream start here.
truly a dream start. That Ultra Ball discarding these two cards now to search out another Pokemon from the deck here from Isaiah. So as far as this matchup goes, if you're on sitting on Isaiah's side of the field, going up against a Lost Box, what is your traditional pattern as far as the Pokemon you're getting out, what you're going to be attacking with, and uh, what you're looking to do in this matchup against a bunch of one prizers? Well, right now, one prizers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're really trying to utilize uh, Cresselia as much as possible. It's usually a card yeah. that you want to use against Dragapult, but it actually really helps against Lost Box as well. Clears damage off your board and takes a knockout on theirs. Usually there's no more Jirachi, so that's pretty key. And Fluttermane. Honestly, Fluttermane is a very powerful attacker uh, to do enough damage on the Confei, set more damage elsewhere, which is really, really nice. But right now we're seeing that Luminion be played. We're going to see the Arvin play potentially um, getting the TM Evo out for double Kirlia. Could have been a research as well to get a fresh hand uh, for Isaiah. I, I, I think I like that a little bit as you already slowed down Cameron quite a bit, but there, you cannot go wrong wow, with that. getting double Kirli out on and your first turn. Yeah, I mean, that, that TM Evolution now being sought out, and then the item card was actually that unfair stamp yep. just being put into the hand. I mean, uh, like I said, the disrespect, it's just, uh, it's just a threat to even see come out of the deck at all here. But that TM Evolution is going to be placed now onto the Fluttermain, and we're going to get to use it. Now, of course, that uh, TM does discard after the turn, but it's going to get these Evolution Pokemon out for Isaiah Bradner into these Curlia. That's going to start drawing into those cards and establishing these different strategies we're going to see down the line here in the later turns of this game. But that also means the Fluttermane is still in the active position here. The turn will end for Isaiah Bradner thanks to that move on the TM Evolution. And it's back to Cameron as well. Yeah, those double Kirli are so important. Buddha, you're talking about that TM evolution, so, so key yeah. for Gardevoir's setup. I think we're going to see a lot of that get utilized this weekend as we see Cameron finally get his turn, but no Colrus in hand. A single copy of oh my Lost goodness. Vacuum. Oh my gosh. Oof. Well, now we have another copy of Lost yeah. Vacuum, but we're <laughs> losing both the Pokemon as well as that Lightning Energy. So more resources hitting the discard pile when you want them to be going into your hand off of that Pokey Stop, uh, getting those item cards. Now we did just see that Iron Thorn. So Isaiah now knows that there's a copy of Iron yeah. Thorns available to Cameron to potentially shut down the Gardevoir EX. So Protecting that Fluttermane is going to be very, very key for Isaiah to make sure that he doesn't get locked out of Psychic Embrace eventually. But no Nest Ball to find Iron Bundle to push this uh, Fluttermane to the bench. So, yeah, just another pass from Cameron. That's not even something I thought of as far as another downside to Pokestop. I already don't even mess with Pokestop. Or I play Pokemon Go, but I don't like rolling that stop. I'll tell you what, because it always fails me. But it's also revealing parts of your deck that you're not choosing to reveal. The Pokestop reveals it. Yep. You spin, you don't know what you're going to get. So that is another factor that now Isaiah has Oof. that information of the deck and even more to work with here, as well as this Iono now that is going to disrupt both hands for both of our players. Shuffle your hand, put it to the bottom, but Isaiah is going to be uh, drawing six new cards here, as well as Cameron. Yeah, Isaiah top deck that Iono, which was very clutch, as he had a single card, right? The on first stamp in hand. But yeah. now with that Iono, gets a fresh new hand. Does give Cameron another fresh hand. And when you've seen your opponent not play Colrus in their previous turn, when there's no reason why they wouldn't, uh, you know you're getting them closer to that. But also, yes. you're getting closer to your own setup. And I think <laughs> Isaiah is definitely going to favor that uh, right here. Yeah, you, also, you always have to value your own setup before um, your opponents because, I mean, if you're in shambles at the end of the game, you're not going to be winning anyway. So make sure you can establish more of a board state than your opponent, even if you do end up helping them just a little bit there. And that's exactly what Isaiah is doing here. These refinements, drawing into these additional cards, discarding those energy into the discard pile as well for Isaiah Bradner. That's, that's what we need to be seeing here. Yeah, getting that psychic energy so, so clutch, right? It's how Gardevoir works. Yes. It's what you need to accomplish. And now with two more in the discard ball, now we could see the Gardevoir EX hit the board, power up the Fluttermane, and start taking some prizes whilst denying wow, the abilities. Look at that. Oh, Isaiah Bradner rolling the stop himself, losing a Radiant Greninja as well as that Drifloon uh, into the discard pile. 
Yeah, Triflin hit in the discard, one of the main attackers in this deck, of course, but Isaiah just wanting to get through his deck as yeah. quickly as he can. Getting that extra Curlia out, it seems, favoring that over the aggression that Guard of War EX would provide, unless he already has it in his hand, I can't really tell. But there's nothing wrong with furthering your setup. The yes. triple Curly on the bench, protected by the Manaphy as well, is so, so key here. Yeah, I always called Gardevoir sort of like a bullet train because as soon as it's fully set up, it is so hard to deal with. Once you get those Psychic Energy into the discard pile, that Gardevoir EX can use the Psychic Embrace, bring them out onto your field. You can utilize your damage counters against your own opponent. I mean, that is huge in this matchup here. And there's so many single prize attackers that you can use as well. And you can really take advantage of your opponent's board state in a very powerful way. So Isaiah Bradner is going to be looking to do that. We now have three Curlia on the bench here. They've all drawn into additional cards. One of them now evolving into that Gardevoir EX. We're going to start getting that bullet train going, Pablo. Yeah, bullet train of Gardevoir EX powering up the Flutter main. It's not usual for the Gardevoir deck to be the <laughs> right? aggressor, but now we're going to see uh, Isaiah take the first prize card against a Lost Zone deck that has zero cards in the Lost Zone. Yeah, and taking it with this Pokemon that just happens to have the Midnight Fluttering ability that is carrying so much weight here in this matchup, shutting down that Comfey from being able to flower select. This is huge for Isaiah. All those energy applied to the Fluttermane, and it is doing work here. Cameron going to have to Iron Bundle now to get that Fluttermane out of the active here. Yeah, that Hyper Blower ability finally. Cameron finding the two perfect cards. Hyper Blower to uh, activate Flower Selecting and also has a Colrus in hand. So we're going to see some form of aggression from Cameron. Isaiah valuing Manaphy the list, not wanting to promote the Luminion in case Cameron goes to run all of a sudden. Iron Hands takes a three prize turn. So yes. we're going to see how Cameron or what Cameron can piece here. Finding a follow up Colrus, finding Nest Ball. Pretty good cards to find. Yeah, those are extremely strong cards that can be added into Cameron's hand here, but two of them are going to have to hit the Lost Zone as well. So with strong cards also comes difficult decisions. Yep. Yeah, that's that's very true. Well, usually, like, you want to find good cards, but some not so good cards, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, nice your, mixture, Yeah, right? exactly, a yeah, balance, <laughs> right? But all five cards were super good, therefore Cameron has to make those tough choices. Yeah. But starts to build the Lost Zone, which is so, so important. Exactly. And now we're building it up here. Lost Zone's up to two. This Flower Selecting now being activated thanks to that Manaphy being the active Pokemon after that Iron Bundle helped out the field a little a little bit. It just Hyper Blowers and then it leaves. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Lost Zone up to three. Now we're going to see an additional Flower Selecting here. Nest Ball uh, being put into the Lost Zone for that Sableye to the hand. Yeah, we're up to four cards now. Now we can go for that Cramorant, potentially take down this Manaphy, which opens up the potential for Radiant Greninja later down the line. Yes. Uh, so a lot of options just to open up for Cameron, but that Fluttermane is still a big threat here as it's probably going to come up, going to attack and continue to deny not only uh, Flower Select, but also Lost Provision. So Cramorant, not a great response to that Fluttermane itself. I mean, really, the only non-threat on the board is is the Luminion at this point. <laughs> yeah. You never know what this Gardevoir deck is going to pull out and uh, what's what it's going to do to your board. And that is a scary position to be in when you face off against it. One of the many reasons that I did choose Gardevoir is one of my uh, decks to root for taking down this entire tournament. It definitely has that potential there. But let's see if Cameron can stand in Isaiah's way with this Turbo Lost Box build. Cramorant's going to join the field here. Thanks to that lost or that nest ball uh, to the discard pile and now we're going to get rolling on Cameron's side of things. Yeah, matching the knockout that Isaiah has already taken. We're going to see the Pokestop discard a Colrus but get a Suprot so not a terrible trade-off. Cameron already has a follow-up Colrus in his hand but that also means that if Isaiah plays on Iono, right, which Gardevoir yeah. is known to do, then <laughs> that Colrus would go to the bottom. So Cameron in a decent spot, also has a Prime Catcher in case he chooses to do that to chase down a Curlia instead of this uh, Manaphy. But I think going after the Manaphy is a little bit better as that opens up the play for the potential Radiant Greninja follow-up. Yeah, you want to open up some options on your fields as well as taking a prize card. It's always nice, too. Uh, we're going to see the pivot here thanks to that hard retreat from Cameron Kawasaki into that Cramorant. 
Of course, Lost Provisions is online because there are four cards in the Lost Zone. Are we going to go back to the Lost Zone here, Pablo? <laughs> that knockout from the Cramorant thanks to this Lost Zone mechanic deck. Isaiah, of course, promoting this Flutter main back into the active once again. Yeah, that Midnight Fluttering so annoying. It's like the it one is. counter you have <laughs> against Lost Box, and then it's going to be present pretty much the whole game now. Isaiah did see the Iron Thorns gets discarded, so he's aware of that threat, knows how valuable this Flutter main is, and therefore this Supra that he might play this turn to recover the mana if he continues yeah. to protect his bench, recover the Drifflin that got discarded by the Pokestop. Very key, but also that Flutter main, like you don't want to be in a situation where your opponent powers up the Iron Thorns, takes a KO, and you have no way to shut it down in order to continue using Psychic Embrace. So an interesting dynamic we have here, and I think it does have that knowledge of that surprise factor that we were talking about. Exactly. That's super rate, it's super rod here for Isaiah, putting a couple of cards back into the deck here. So we're recovering some resources on Isaiah's side of the field, going back into the deck with that buddy buddy Poffin as well. Yeah, this could refine that Drifland, probably going to rebench the mana fee. Now Cameron's uh, Radiant Grange, I believe, is prized, but Isaiah doesn't know that, so he's yeah. being extra, extra careful, and that's always how you want to play, right? Prepare for the worst case scenario. If the worst case scenario doesn't happen, fantastic. And if it does happen, well, you were prepared for it, so you're completely fine. Yeah, you want to play with the edge being your, your deck list, the mystery of the cards that you have, the mystery of what your strategy might be. Not living on the edge and uh, taking risks here, that's for sure. So that mana fee is going to come right back out uh, onto the field for Isaiah to protect that bench here with its ability. And then Collapse Stadium is also going to be put into play. This is limiting both of our players' bench to four Pokemon each. Yeah, and speaking of bench protection, right? If uh, Luminion is a liability. Ooh. This is how you can get rid of it, as we do see that unfair stamp that you love so much. <laughs> I do. Get I, played. Love <laughs> I love it so much. It just, it, it's so disrespectful. Uh, <laughs> even the art is just really cool. I know that a lot of people are not a fan of this card, and usually it's because it's being played against you. But, you know, if there's a knockout that happens, it does unlock the ability here, and Isaiah is going to take advantage of that, limiting Cameron down to just two cards and that really could I mean speaking of edges that could put you over the edge to debilitate your opponent enough and take a far enough lead in a match and that's why this card is so so good you know with Roxanne you can't play it till much later in the game it's more of a comeback card but this is not a comeback part a card this is a card you play like hey I don't want you to even be able to play this game anymore after you knock one of my Pokemon out that's what you get buddy <laughs> 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 yeah, as, as you mentioned, right? Usually when you're putting down your opponent to two guards, it's either with a Roxanne, which is later down the line, yeah. or Iono, which is even further. But on first time, you can play it on turn two if your Pokemon got KO'd. So very powerful tool here it's for huge. sure. And it's especially powerful because Cameron last turn uh, discarded a second Colrus off of Pokestop. So he has two Colruses left. His abilities are being shut down at this point. And off of two cards, like, even if you find a switch, right, it's not going to be yeah. useful because you can't exactly. flower select. So it's one of the two copies of Colrez, perhaps the prime catcher. And that's basically the only cards that help Cameron in this spot. Yes, calm, cool, collected Isaiah Bradner is carrying out these actions here all by plan. And that midnight fluttering. Uh, ability is still in the active here on that flutter main and it's going to be doing more damage not only to the active cramorant but it is also putting two damage counters on the benched pokemon as well for cameron so we're stacking up damage even over there on that iron hands and that's going to be a Pablo. the unfair stamp was unfortunately just a little bit too unfair here to cameron now i love isaiah could end up uh suffering from that and the same for Cameron, right? After yes. he has the Flutter main comes in the active, it's Colrus how you get those cards in Lost Zone. And with two exactly. of them prized, it's going to be a little difficult to actually get cards in the Lost Zone. 
Yeah, you want to be chaining those Colrus's experiment as much as possible. Not only are you stacking up your Lost Zone, but you're also stacking up cards into your own hands that are playing into your strategy for the future of your turns. So that could definitely be very difficult here for Cameron, having two of those Colrus's experiments in the prize cards. Maybe a little less experimenting in this game, but that Buddy Buddy Poppin is not failing us on our first turns for our players so far. Cameron going to bring out these Comfey into the field, but I'm sure very happy to see that it's Screamtail this time in the active, and we're going to yeah. be able to select <laughs> some flowers. <laughs> it's still an ancient Pokemon, just not the one yeah. you actually hate to see in the active now. Cameron, once again, being very thorough with his price checking, Pokemon to the front, energy yes. to the back, and that's usually what you want to prioritize, right? Because you have the least of uh, and the singles and the Pokemon, you want to know what options you have access to. Mm -hmm. But I got to wonder, he's passing through his deck quite a few times. I'm sure he's going to notice that there's only two Colrus available. Yeah. So it's going to be a priority to thin as much as possible and try to find them to combat the threat of that Fluttermane. The ideal scenario is to use Ampu very much against that Fluttermane. That would be the dream for Cameron here. Yeah, and look at this. Cameron does have the notes on the side here to note take what is in the prize cards. Colrus's experiment is definitely one of those cards. It's easy to check for, it's easy to see, and I'm sure that was just written down there from Cameron. Great strategy from our players, making sure they know exactly what is in their prize cards so they can plan for their future turns. Like you said, Pablo, thinning your deck is going to be huge at this point because every single draw matters here to Cameron. So we're going to be getting into some flower selectings here, hopefully not too different. Difficult. You know, you know, maybe some of our Lost Box players wishing for, for the days again that once you're past your first turn, we have Battle VIP to just throw away <laughs> into the Lost Zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's usually like when you're flower selecting, right? You're hoping for one good card and one less bad good card. card. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Not many of them are bad. Yeah, really. exactly. Like you wouldn't purposely play bad cards in your deck to kind no, of loss all them no. away, right? That would just be wasteful. But uh, there's definitely as games develop, there's some cards that are more useful than others. But we're going to start with the flower selects right here. Hopefully getting a bunch of them. There's the Ooh. pseudo battle VIP patch, yeah. right? You, uh, Buddy Buddy Puffin is good, but it doesn't get you Kramer. It doesn't get you uh, Sableye even. So it's, it's a good card to get rid of um, after you have your Calm face down. Yeah, and it's also tough to just throw an A spec into the Lost Zone as well. I mean, you can only play one single. Oh, is that the Ursaluna and the Colruses? Yes. Oh it's, my it's gosh. Love wow. Ursaluna, which is the high damage Pokemon for Cameron. And it's also the Colrus, the card he really needs. And uh, yeah, I, I think you have to favor that, but that's really going to limit Cameron's damage output moving forwards. Yeah, those are the tough decisions we've been talking about here. That Iron Bundle going to join us on the bench as well for Cameron, but that's going to be it. After that Lost Zone was stacked up to three, thanks to that one flower selecting as well as a Colrus's experiment. Isaiah Bradner on the first turn of our game two now, getting started with a Buddy Buddy Poffin of his own. We're going to probably see quite a bit of searching here for Isaiah. So let's talk about this match a little bit more, Pablo. How do you think the pace of play is going to change here between both of our players now that, of course, we don't see that Fluttermane in the active position on Isaiah's side? Yeah, I mean, that already allowed Cameron to get three cards in the loss on his first turn, right? As opposed to zero during the first two turns last time around. So this is really going to speed things up. And I think it's really going to favor Cameron, especially as he has the Iron Bundle that you mentioned already on the bench. So he has immediate protection against the Fluttermane in the next turn as yes. well. So off to the races for Cameron and Isaiah on the other side. Does have an Iono, so might not be able to... I don't know. I couldn't see if he had an Arvin, so might not be able to get those Curlias into play, and that will delay him a turn. So we're seeing the opposite of game one. Yes. We're seeing Isaiah much lower, Cameron much faster. But unfortunately for Cameron, he did find that Colres of the last flower select. He kept it, right? And Isaiah did see Cameron that he hesitated. He had a tough choice to make. That's going to make Isaiah yes. even more uh, eager to play that Iono. And that, that Colrus was a blessing in disguise. You're relieved that you found it, but now it's going to the bottom. Not only that, but Isaiah doesn't know that two Colrus's experiment yeah. are in the prize cards as well for Cameron. So that makes it even worse of a situation if Isaiah does decide to use that Iono, of course, this is the second turn of, uh, or the first turn for Isaiah going second. So the ability is there, and that could lead to some 
some slow pacing potentially from Cameron, but we'll see if, uh, you know, the deck is able to be shuffled up potentially and then drawn into off some flower yeah. selectings. You never know what's going to happen, but we really have not had the chance to thin too much yet, and that's what can make it a little bit awkward there for Cameron. Of course, Isaiah writing in the note, his own notebook here, notating all of those prize cards so that we can get going through this turn now on this uh, first turn of the game here for Isaiah. Two Ralts on the field, as well as that Manaphy being established as well. Playing it safe, I love it. And here's that Iono, both players shuffling up. These hands are gonna go to the bottom and they're drawing for each prize card. So both players are gonna get six cards here now to work with. Yep, six fresh new cards for both. Cameron not gonna be super, super happy about that Calder's yes. hitting the bottom of the deck. Isaiah looking for the combination of energy plus TM Evo, but I don't think he found even a single energy. No follow up routes, no Ooh. body body puffin. So Isaiah's bench gonna look very lackluster compared to game one. Yeah, game one, it was so nice having that Flutter main being your starter Pokemon into this matchup, but it is looking a little bit more difficult here for Isaiah. There's still cards in hands that he uh, has the ability to work with after that Iono, but just assessing the board state now here for Isaiah, and it's just going to be a pass over to Cameron. Yeah, just a pass. I mean, he did find the Urson, could have maybe yeah. gone for the Flutter main, but he had no energy to retreat into, so, and there's the Iron Bundle already, so choosing not to give his opponent that Artisan maybe make it a little bit yeah. harder for Cameron to find the follow of Cameron, but Cameron off to races, going for those Flower Selects, going for those Switches, one Colrus at the bottom, but there's still another Colrus that could be accessed, and wow, another very unfortunate <laughs> choice for Cameron. Oh, Iron no. Hands or Radiant Greninja Boo? I, I don't want to even be making this choice right now, Pablo. <laughs> I really don't. Have you have you seen that meme where it's just like the Lost Box are like, oh no, that's yeah. exactly what we just witnessed here. That, that is exactly what we just witnessed. The two Jeez. ways that Cameron has to take two prizes. Now one of them completely gone for the rest of the game. Value there in hands, can attack with it twice, potentially yeah. getting closer, right? Is at five cards, does need double Mirage Kid plus a way to retreat to potentially um, to potentially get the attack off, does have Pokestop as well. I think he might be close to getting the Iron Hands KO this up or this turn. Really. Yeah, yeah. At least that Pokestop finally paid off for us after some difficult decisions. After that, Radiant Greninja is lost here, but Lost Zone's up to five. Pokestop finally got us some item cards. We're going back into the deck here now for Cameron with that Nest Ball that's going to draw out the Cramorant onto the board. Yeah, Cramorant might be the choice this turn, as we do see it in the board. Now, Iron Bundle will still be very good here. Using True. Cramorant to knock out either Ralts uh, would be great. Now, Isaiah does see the Radiant Greninja in the in the Lost Zone, right? Oh, so yes. he now probably knows that there's no more need for mana because you cannot play two copies of Radiant Greninja. Yes, you cannot. It is a Radiant Pokemon, <laughs> only one per deck. Uh, unfortunate because they are so powerful, but yeah. that's why you can only play one in your deck. All right. So Kramer just going to come up, knock out that attacker in the scream tail, and Manaphy is going to join us in the active position now from Isaiah. Yeah, spit innocently for Cameron. Now the aggressor gets that first prize card, which is so, so clutch. Still has Aaron Bundle, so could push the Manaphy back to KO something juicier, like a Ralt yes. or a Kirlia. But now it's on Isaiah to make something happen. Does have the Arvin, can get TM Evo to potentially evolve these two Ralts. Would need to find the um, Earthen Vessel in order to get those energies, unless he top decked one, which I'm not quite sure I saw. He, he did actually, does have that nice. energy. So we'll have to see what item card he picks. Could be that unfair stamp to try and deny Cameron resources. But the sure. one thing he knows is that there's no call risk in Cameron's hand, right? Yes. Otherwise, he would have played it. So two cards is less, but it's also two new cards, which could be that yeah, call could risk. Be the call risk. So maybe finding a, a, a different time for it uh, would be better. So we'll have to see what Isaiah chooses for his item card. Yeah, you got to see what happens. Of course, that TM is going to be the uh, tool card being brought out of the deck here, allowing Isaiah to establish this board even more. And it is going to be the unfair stamp, at least drawn out here from Isaiah. So I guess we're going to see what strategy uh, Isaiah is going to be following here and if it's going to get in the way of Cameron's future setup. Yeah, that 
That on first damp will shuffle away that Iron Hand ZX back into the deck, right? So making it a lot harder to get double two more cards in the Lost Zone, double yes. Rash Gate. A way to switch to attack with Iron Hand, so that's gonna benefit Isaiah, but um, without taking a knockout, the unfair stamp is less and less impactful yeah. as the, uh, like, in the early game, you want to combine that with Ooh. an attack, and wow, we see the focus of this card. The only routes left in Isaiah's deck as the wow. fourth one is prized. The only routes hitting the discard pile along with two Psychic Energy, but that Super Rod is going to be utilized this time around here for Isaiah to bring both of these attackers, or future attackers, I should say, back into the deck. Yeah, we're going to see that Artisan probably fetching that route that just got discarded. And that was like the, the trade off. You use Pokestop uh, and then. You have which, some recovery options. Yeah, you have some yeah. recovery options, but you could have played the Artisan first, right? To get that Ralts and then avoid that. You, yes. do, you do get two energies into a discard pile. So it's a, a win lose sort of uh, scenario for him. Now, Isaiah doesn't choose to play the on first stamp. Cameron will retain his huge hand, will get closer to those choruses, but now he knows the on-first stamp is coming. So we'll have to see how Cameron prepares for that. We will have to see, but that technical machine evolution going to be used over here on this mana fee now. I love tech technical machines. You can just put them on any Pokemon and they work, but it's going to be discarded, of course, after the turn. But those Curlia are now out onto the field for Isaiah Bradner, and that's where we needed to get to here to start drawing into additional cards and getting into those Gardevoir as well in the future. Cameron Kawasaki kicking off this turn now over here on the left side of our field. Yeah, Cameron has such an underwhelming Ooh. hand. He has so many cards, but doesn't have the Lost Zone counter to really utilize them and doesn't even have an energy or a way to switch into Ooh. the Confei. So he's going to be able to potentially knock out a Ralt, but can't find that Colrus at this point in time, really. Yeah, and that really is the uh, what is stumping Cameron right now, just the limited Culver's experiment slowing down this deck when we had so much potential here versus dealing with that Flutter main in the last game. Buddy Buddy Poffin going back into the deck here from Cameron to search out some more basic Pokemon onto the bench potentially. And uh, yeah, just looking through the deck. Yeah, Buddy Buddy Puffin could fetch Mana Fee just to thin, right? Not that you need True. it to protect against Gardevoir. There is that Flutter main, I mean, the uh, Scream Tail that can target down benched Pokemon. But at this point, I don't think you need that protection. Now, Cameron does have a Pokestop. That Pokestop could give him switching cards. Mm -hmm. uh, the switch cards, the switches, even Prime Catcher would be decent. Uh, can't give him a call wrist though, and it would be very unfortunate to discard another call wrist. Oh, if that happens, that would be tragic <laughs> here, Pablo. It really would be, yes. Ho hopefully, if it's played, that is not what is about to go down here, and it's not the caster curse that we potentially <laughs> uh, have for our players, but. Cameron still has a couple of uh, cards to work with here. That Super Rod being played out of the hand to shuffle in these two Pokemon as well as that Water Energy. So the bundle is back as well as that Sableye. Yeah, bundle is fetched through that Artisan at this point in time. So getting some use out of it, wanted to use the Artisan before he committed his own Pokestop. Yes. Might not even play the Pokestop. Yeah, yeah, true. But, you never know. Uh, really values that bundle as that Manaf is probably going to keep coming up. Ooh. There's a Pokestop, though. Yep, Artisan being used. Switched out now for Pokestop. Are we going to be Pogo gamers here for Cameron? <laughs> of course. We're going to have to roll it and see what we get. Okay, I mean, Ooh, Switch Card's good. Yeah. Switch Card gets you to six. Could have been worse. Yeah, Could have been, been worse. worse. <laughs> Could <laughs> maybe get you to a call risk. Yeah, yeah. Even a lost vacuum. A lost vacuum uh, would be a dream uh. card, but no. The Switch Card could still get you there, yes. right? But the Switch, you're going to get to seven cards. And uh, actually, I think that's it. This, with oh, the switch, my. Cameron could attack with Iron Hands this turn. If he Whoa. lost zones, the Roxanne retreats, then switches, and okay. that's seven. So I, th I, think I think Cameron we're good. was just thinking it out. <laughs> yeah, thinking, thinking it out. It out. Yeah. And honestly, that's what you should be doing if you're going to be playing one of these decks here. Oh, Mirage Gate and wow. Energy. I do believe there will be enough energy to access Iron Hands after this, but losing a Mirage Gate or losing an Energy, yeah. not ideal cards for sure. 
I mean, I feel like we're never talking about ideal cards in these choices, <laughs> unfortunately. But that lightning energy going to hit the Lost Zone now, bringing Cameron up to seven cards in the Lost Zone. That's the point at which we needed to access this Mirage Gate that can now go through the deck, search out two different types of basic energy, and that is what is going to be powering up this Iron Hands EX. So Cameron is finally getting things done here on the board for this, I guess, quotations, turbo lost box deck. Yeah, yeah it hasn't been as turbo as Cameron would have liked <laughs> it to be. It's still working, though. It's, it's still working. <laughs> it's hard to get it to work without uh, chorus, right? Yes. It's, so it's kind of working, but we got there. We're going to see an yes. very much against the Ralts, which is really, really good. We also got resources out, and this puts immense pressure on Isaiah. Isaiah has to respond to this immediately with a Drifloon, with a Bravery Charm, and enough energies powered up to take down this Iron Hand. So very crucial turn coming up for Isaiah here. And even if he does respond, he's going to be a little bit in the back foot. Yeah. As with Cameron's triple loss vacuum, he could just end up having another uh, two price turn exactly. by loss vacuuming away the Bravery Charm of the Drifflin and then using Iron Bundle to knock out the Mana Fee and could go down to one price card. So a lot of pressure onto Isaiah at this point. Yeah, and let's take note that we're just under 13 minutes now for both of our players here. So if Cameron's able to pull out this game with a win, we could end up seeing a tie between these players. So everything is on the line here for Isaiah now to be able to respond to this from Cameron. Now one call res was finally unlocked from Woo! the prize cards, Boo, so we might see the first call res eventually <laughs> in this match. Finally. <laughs> Now, there are two Psychic Energies in the Discord Ball. Isaiah does need four total to respond with the Drifloon, plus the Bravery Charm, plus the Gardevoir EX. Okay. Oh. And we see the on first stamp to start. Isaiah had the Bravery Charm and had the Gardevoir EX, yeah. but did not have a way to get Drifloon. Yeah. Unfortunate turn of cards, because if we just had a couple more things there, Isaiah maybe could have had a little bit more to work with, but this unfair stamp is going to get him an additional five cards after a shuffle of what was already in the hand as well. Cameron, of course, going to be limited to two cards, so slowing down your opponent. Ooh, Ooh was that the prime catcher? It was prime what? catcher and a Colris, so oh not gosh, as unfair wow. as you would think it would be. Yeah, we Cameron got the green finding. stamp that time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a great stamp for Cameron. And now, if I see a response to this, it's going to be fine. And even if Cameron had gotten two awful cards and yeah. the Iron Hands gets KO'd, like Cameron still has some play, has the free retreat with that rescue board on the config, can access more cards, has the attacker in Cameron to respond to Drifloon. So it could have been fine, but that draw for Cameron must be like very relieving <laughs> for him as he's going to yes. play the first Colrus in this second game. Exactly. You're going to be playing a little bit less uphill battle and a little bit more smooth sailing here, potentially for Cameron. So fantastic two cards that you want to be drawing into off of that unfair stamp. Now, it's interesting to note that Isaiah obviously has not played a supporter yet, right? So could follow this up with an Iono to give Cameron uh, more cards this yeah. turn and take away those fantastic cards that he just drew. And I think it's, yeah, there, oh, there's the Iono. Wow. So Isaiah really looking for that. Uh, perfect combination. <laughs> and now Cameron once again <laughs> the getting that chorus taken away. That's the third oh, time. But they find another, another one. one. <laughs> yeah, they find another one. So finally. Oh, gosh. Yes. <laughs> Thankfully, that one was taken out of the prize card. So we're working with a little bit more here for Cameron. So uh, <laughs> heightened emotions there all around. But Iona was the, uh, the play here from Isaiah. So this scream tail going to hit the discard pile now off of the second refinement on this Curlia. Ooh. Yeah, we're going to see the Pokestop, Boss, okay. Body Body Pop, and the Ultra Ball. The Ultra Ball, I think, was the missing piece for Isaiah to find the card of EX. And does have exactly four energies, does have the Drifloon, oh. and might have the Bravery Charm. Yeah, that no, uh, I, I feel like I saw it. it. I thought I did as well, but then I oh. doubt it. Oh, yeah, because it may have been a Poffin, honestly. Uh, oh, yeah, I yeah, don't see there's it. There's no Bravery no. Charm. So what is Isaiah's response here? Maybe just attacking with the Gardevoir EX and hoping Cameron can't wow. do much. But with Iron Bundle, Isaiah will not be able to prevent Cameron from taking two more prize cards here. This is 
Yeah, that's brutal. You you just came up one card short after you saw so many cards yes, as well. So many cards. I mean, we, we saw the unfair stamp. We saw the Iono. We saw two refinements here as well for Isaiah, but just not able to hit that tool card needed to boost up that HP for the Drifloon and be able to knock out this Iron Hands EX. So that threat will remain there. And now Isaiah has to re-navigate this turn and figure out what is going to happen here as far as attacks and pressure put forward onto Cameron's side. Yeah, there's not even a darkness energy to use. Monkey Dory's Adrena Brain, a card that we predicted would be so good and so yeah. powerful. We haven't seen it be utilized right here in this game. Isaiah is holding a counter catcher, so can take a knockout probably on one of these three Pokemon, either mm -hmm. remove their rescue board, remove the attacker, or remove the iron bundle option potentially, but that's not super, super impactful. If he had the dark energy, he could have used that to potentially uh, get closer to knocking out the Iron Hands, leave it up to 20, and then knock it out the turn after with uh, the Adrenal Brain and like piece something there. But yeah. Isaiah just a few cards short from this KO. There were options, but they all just seem to have faded away thanks to exactly what you just said, Pablo. Just a few cards short. Couldn't make things work here, unfortunately, but Collapse Stadium is going to come into play, limiting the benches here. So Cameron going to have to get rid of one of these Pokemon, go down to just four on the bench as Isaiah takes the Manaphy off of the board as well. Yeah, I, I couldn't imagine uh, Cameron choosing Ooh. anything other than the Confei. Now we're going to see the Iron Bundle option get removed. Maybe Isaiah trying to make something happen with the yes. Fluttermane and locking something down. But overall, the Iron Hands is going to live this turn. And uh, with no more Iron Bundle, now you can't use that to push the Guard of War EX back, but there's still the possibility to find Prime Catcher. There's still the possibility to shuffle back the Iron Bundle with Super Rod and search for it again as we see a Super Top deck immediately off the top. Wow, Cameron Kawasaki seems to be drawn pretty well Ooh. now, and we're going to see this Colrus's experiment as well. Yep, and there's a Nest Ball found as well, so could we utilize that Iron Bundle? I would be very surprised if Cameron did anything differently. He could also choose to use Sableye to potentially take down the Curlia, take down the Drifloon, oh, yeah. or take down, well, anything really. <laughs> he can take down anything <laughs> on the bench. So many circles on board <laughs> so right now. So many circles. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that would be huge as well. I'm excited to see where Cameron goes with this turn because there are a lot of options here. And there's only three prize cards left, just under seven minutes for both of our players in this match. And Cameron's looking like he's in a pretty good position here to take this game off of Isaiah Bradner. Yeah, Cameron in a fantastic position for sure. Gonna go for that super hot play, get back Woo. the iron bundle, then use it. Uh, Isaiah probably going to give up on the Fluttermane, <laughs> I'm guessing. That's probably. like the least uh, useful card at this point. Does need the Drifloon to deal with the Iron Hands, but then a single Lost Vacuum could win him the game. The Cramorant wins him the game. I have to wonder if you're Isaiah Bradner here, like, uh, like your chances of winning this game are dwindling Slim. and dwindling. So uh, what... What is in his mind in terms of trying to win this game or even trying to win this series? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I mean, there's really not much time left. I, I guess you could have something happen in the future in our third game between these players, but you, you never truly know. Ooh. So maybe yeah. just playing things out. What, yeah. Did you see what happened? Yeah, Pablo? can't, can't nest ball with it because of the collapsed stadium. Oh, gotcha, uh, you gotcha, You cannot gotcha. nest ball for, uh, for that save light. Now. Yeah, it's limited to four Pokemon on each player's bench uh, here. Sorry, you can nest ball for the Iron Bundle, but you cannot you bench cannot the Sableye. Bench the the Sableye was from hand, yes. so it's easily reversible. Shouldn't Woo, be okay. a, uh, a big deal, right? Um, here it's easily reversible, easily fixed. Um, now it is on both players to uh, be very attentive to the, um, to the board, right? Board it is conditions, Isaiah's yeah. Collapse Stadium, so we need both players on top of things as well. Both players, indeed, Pablo. But for now, we're back to four Pokemon for each of these players. Bundle Baby joining us once again. Thanks to being drawn back out here from Cameron. Yep, take us reshuffled. No big deal. Now Cameron will use the Iron Bundle uh, to Hyper Blower away Woo. that Gardevoir EX. Isaiah promoting the Drifloon. Interesting choice. Yeah, I think Isaiah with that choice. I have to wonder, is he just going to try to go for, like, counter-catcher, bring up the Cramorant, Iono, 
and hope Cameron whips enough turns to uh, stop this game from getting completed? I, I, I guess that could be the strategy here that we see from Isaiah, but Cameron Kawasaki is going down to one prize card left in that lost vacuum remaining in the prize cards thanks to that Iron Hands EX taking another two prize knockout here and just one prize card away from taking this entire game in our Swiss round two, game two between both these players. Isaiah going to promote this Gardevoir EX back into the active position, of course, putting those damage counters uh, back onto it from the Psychic Embrace that accelerates those energies from the discard pile onto your Pokemon. You do have to take a little bit of damage, but uh, Cresselia actually likes dealing with some of that, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Cresselia definitely doesn't mind that. And Monkey Dory. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> Monkey Dory also enjoys having damage counters everywhere yes. for that Adrenabrain, and we're finally going to see that, I think, with Yay. that Darkness energy. Joe, your pick. <laughs> it's on stage here. Woo! <laughs> Earth and Vessel going to be used. Discarding an Arvin to search out these two basic energy in the dark and the psychic. Yep. And, yeah, and it's only one dark, too, yeah, in, in the whole list. Dark. Yeah, it's Yeah, so even though people like, are really valuing that Monkey Dory and calling it the best card in Card of War, Isaiah being like, yeah, it's cool, but I can work with it without it sometimes, yeah. right? Well, you can't value it too much, because yeah. if you dedicate too many cards to it, then it's more like, how much are you um, risking or, I guess, accounting for in your deck versus how much it's helping you. You know, you have to weigh those decisions. So one dark energy, able to search it out with that earthen vessel, which of course can be searched out with the Arvin as well, or just drawn into. So there's a ability to access that dark energy, and that's exactly what Isaiah was able to do with that earthen vessel. Now it's attached to that monkey Dory. So Adrenavrain is gonna be uh, popping off here, Pablo, and I'm excited to see it. I like this little monkey. Yeah, Adrenobrain, such a cool ability. Transferring is like, it's like a potion for your own Pokemon, yes. and then you send that damage to your opponent. So very powerful ability. We'll see if that ends up helping Isaiah make any sort of comeback here. We're going to see that Iono now yeah. bringing Cameron oh. down to one card left. There's no more Hyper Blowers who yep. can't push that Gardevoir away. There is a copy of Boss Orders, I believe, still available. <gasps> there's a Whoa. Prime Catcher still. Oh, I was about to say, no, there's too many <laughs> cards. But yep. yeah, we're, we're fixed. We're fixed. Yep. Five cards for Isaiah. Cool. Does find Enhanced Hammer not very useful here. Does find a Counter Catcher yeah. in case he wants to do something with that. Two minutes on the clock will... Uh, yeah. Ooh, Counter Catcher being discarded. That's wow. very peculiar. Oh, I think it was, oh no. It was supposed to be a different card here. The Enhanced Hammer was what Isaiah meant to discard off of that refinement curly up, but accidentally chose the Counter Catcher. Is trying to take it back and put it back into the yeah. hand, it looks like. And I think it's going to be up to Cameron I think it's up and to the Cameron judges. To let him yeah. take it back, yeah. Oh, it looks and like that's Cameron exactly what he's doing. Cameron does allow him to do that, yep. Yeah. Wow, what a good sport in Cameron. Very good sport indeed, very good sport. Now, one minute left on the clock, so time will run down, and it's going to be up to Cameron to take one more prize card. We'll have two turns to do so, Yeah. right? Um, if time does run down at this point, which... Yeah, it's I rounded would, down for sure. Down, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. hey, we get the Monkey Dory here now, finally. Not only do you have the healing from your Pokemon, but those damage counters are moved to your opponent's board state as well. Now, a nice little 30 damage onto that Iron Hands EX. I couldn't quite see um, what was Cameron's one card off of Iono. So we'll we're have about to see. see I think. Yeah, we're about to find out. <laughs> switch, switch card. card. That switch card is huge. Oh, top deck, uh, the Mirage Gate as so, well. Yeah, if there's a psychic energy left in the deck, then yeah. that's a win. Yeah, you power <gasps> up Sableye and Here you put go. 12 damage counters wherever you want and you get the win. So we're going to see Beautiful. Cameron win <laughs> this game that. two on zero seconds on the clock zero seconds the timer has gone down the buzzer is sounding here and cameron was iono to one single card 